So you want to start an art business? Now what? Do you need a big fancy website? Do you need an LLC and a business account? How do you handle clients? How do you handle payments? Why doesn't anybody talk about this? Welcome to Our Mentor. My name is Sean, and I want to answer all these questions and more that you don't even know you have yet as you start and you grow your art business because I wish I knew this sooner. So here comes a really brutal reality that y'all are going to face as you are conducting yourself as a business person, as you're growing yourself, as you're starting to feel that momentum coming, okay? You're inevitably going to hit those certain times where you're getting a lot of business and then nothing. You are going to get flash floods and you're gonna get droughts, okay? There have been so many times where I've experienced just like waves and waves and waves and next after next after next and everything is coming in at once. And then it's just like crickets and nothing. So you're gonna go from these peaks and valleys of like, woohoo, I'm on top of the world to like, I'm worthless, nobody wants to buy from me. Like this is totally normal though, okay? But if you are experiencing a very long sustained drought, like I'm talking like more than a couple months, then you need to reevaluate what your systems are, what you need to do, and how you can be more successful and how you can target your potential clients. Because by doing this, you are actually going to continue to get more floods than you are droughts. So make sure that you are not on a sustained famine. I've seen so many artists freak out about this, so don't be one of them either. So as you're starting or you're growing your business, inevitably, as you start talking to more and more people, as you start to create more and more leads, uh, you're gonna get people who will say things to the effect of, no, or that's too much, or that's outside of my budget, or oh, I wish I could, but I can't. And that's usually why most art entrepreneurs are going to quit and fail because they're just gonna get just really downtrodden. They're gonna get really defeated over the fact that their close rate isn't 100%. But y'all, if this is you, friend, I just need to let you know this, that is a horribly unrealistic expectation. In no other field, in no other circumstance in life, can you really expect to just nail it 100% of the time? Like, why are you doing that to yourself? Don't set yourself up for failure like that. Like, seriously, check it out like this. If you are a NBA player, you are only hitting a basket 40% of the time. If you are a professional MLB player, you're missing that ball 70% of the time when you're trying to hit it. So why in the world do you think that you as an art entrepreneur, do you think that you are supposed to close every single sale? That's just not realistic, friend. But here's the thing I do want you to think about though, is that every single time that you initiate a conversation, every single time that you're talking about an opportunity, that is an opportunity for you to get some cash, to get some money, for you to grow yourself. So don't get discouraged by that. Get encouraged by every single opportunity that comes your way, whether it does or it doesn't, fan out because that is an opportunity for you to grow and for you to fine tune all of your systems so that you will close more often. Have you ever been talking with somebody and they are extremely interested? Like they're just so enthusiastic and they just love you and they just love your art. And then you slap down your price and they're like, okay, that sounds great. So let me just get back to you or let me just talk to so-and-so. Let me check in with my wife, my husband, and we'll get right back to you. Right. And you're just so enthusiastic. Like you cannot wait to start that project. Right. Well, I gotta, I gotta drop this bomb on you, friend. You should never, ever count on that going through. And what I mean by that is don't, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be enthusiastic about the prospect of it, but y'all don't ever count your money before it is collected. I don't even really think twice about any type of business opportunity until I get a PayPal notification for it. And if you are doing this, friend, I'm gonna tell you, a client's interest does not equal their potential to buy, okay? It's great, but honestly, y'all, sometimes you're gonna talk to somebody who's super enthusiastic and then life is just gonna punch them in the face and they're gonna realize the real circumstances. Maybe they don't have the money. Maybe it's actually not a good decision for them. Maybe it's not something that they are comfortable with and they may or may not just ghost you at that point, but don't feel bad about that. But most certainly do not ever spend money before you actually collect it because I have definitely gotten super excited and gone out and bought something or you go out to dinner and then guess what? Deal falls through. And then at the end of the day, you just feel like an idiot. So make sure you don't make that mistake. All right, so check this out. Now you've got that client hooked and they promise that they're gonna go ahead and do it and you've agreed to it. Maybe you even signed a contract or something like that too. Now you're starting to get really excited. You're starting to do some work. You're starting to do some sketches and you're starting to gather some references. You're starting to get really into that project, get really invested into it, right? But hold up, halt. Don't do that. 
The problem here is that you should never ever do anything until you collect payment. One time I had an author who wanted me to read a chapter of their book so that I understood it so I could make the cover. And I was like, whoa, hold on there, bro. Uh, no, we're not doing that because uh, I'm not gonna invest into you until you invest into me. And that's the attitude I like you to have too because it's a safe, sustainable attitude, my friend. The issue here is that this is often a very predatory practice of people who are trying to scam you. Y'all watch out for this because listen, why do you want to proceed forward and invest your time and energy and your excitement into a project when at the same time you're battling the doubt and you're battling the anxiety of, am I gonna collect payment? Am I actually gonna get the payment that I want? You are never going to bring the best possible version of that artwork out if you are constantly worried about the payment potential of it. So make sure that you're protecting yourself and do not ever do anything for any type of client or any type of business opportunity unless you are collecting payment first. Now here's the worst business decision that you're ever gonna make in your life, y'all. Not liking and subscribing to this channel, y'all. What are you waiting for? I give you lots of pearls of wisdom for you to grow and be a better artist, a better business person. So make sure you do that and make sure you pay attention to this too. Now, let's say that you've got some momentum going, right? Maybe you've got a steady stream of clients coming in. You're starting to roll in a little bit of dough. It's kind of nice, right? You got that side hustle income coming and you're starting to really grow it, right? And now you really start to think about this or hey, maybe you're just starting out and this question pops in your head like, hey, do I have to establish myself as an official business at this point? Are you thinking that you have to LLC or incorporate yourself? Are you thinking like, man, I have to go down to the bank and go ahead and get a business checking account? Hold that thought. Okay, because listen, there are some people that will literally like get their first $75 commission and then they'll like be run to the bank trying to figure out, well, which business account do I get and which one has the, the least fees that I have to pay and just stop doing that, y'all. Here is my ultimate advice for you. The only reason that you should be starting an LLC is in establishing yourself as an official business is when you have a steady stream of income, you have that sustained client base, and you're starting to accumulate a pretty good, decent amount of money. Just to put a monetary figure on that, in USD, I'm talking like five to $10,000 within a calendar year. And at that point, you can definitely think about establishing yourself as a business entity. Otherwise, honestly, it's just not even worth it. It's not worth it for the fees. It's not worth it for the extra aggravation when you have to do your taxes and stuff. Uh, anything less than that, like you can just go ahead and claim that as extra income and just put away 30% of every single one of your sales and you're good to go with that, okay? But the reason why you would want to go ahead and establish an LLC, which is a limited liability company, would be for tax purposes and so that you don't have Uncle Sam or whatever, country's version of that that you're in right now coming after you because you're earning too much money okay when you get that business checking account when you have a steady flow of income because business checking accounts y'all they have stipulations they have rules they have regulations they have fees associated with them and if you can't maintain the average daily balance it's just not even worth it for you so don't worry about that y'all but grow into that eventually too but otherwise y'all you can you can just keep it a lot more casual than that okay just put away money for yourself so you don't get screwed on your taxes a common thing that i talk to people about all the time and I hear this so ad nauseum that it just drives me crazy is that once you start to think about yourself as a business the first thing people will be like I need a website and I need to host on this domain I need to make sure that I pay this amount I need to make sure that I pay enough to rank it in SEO go ahead and just do it on social media first like advertise yourself there because literally there are billions of eyes that are on social media every single day and that costs you zero dollars to go ahead and advertise yourself versus if you're going to set up a website why would that be a great thing for you but the only reason that you would want to have a website in place for you would definitely not be if you have commissions it would not be if you're doing uh illustrative works every once in a while it would not be if you're just a concept artist and you need a portfolio y'all there are plenty of places you can host your portfolio for free like artstation like behance you can go ahead and put your website on these and they serve as professional quality websites for you to put on, okay? Do not get suckered in to the broken mindset of thinking that you must have a website in order to succeed. Better things that you can do too is that if you do have some type of established following is that you could probably just go ahead and assemble an email list. And then that way you will literally reach your customers. But do not waste money and waste an extensive amount of time trying to design some big, awesome, fancy website or paying somebody to do it for you when you don't even have that much of a business plan in place in order to get the traction, in order to get the sales from that website. It's such a waste of time, y'all. Please live in the current age. You don't need this anymore until you're huge.
Now, once you've got a lot of momentum, all right, then you're gonna start to assemble some cash. You can, especially once you have yourself set up as a business entity, as an LLC or anything above that, if you have employees, then you can definitely think about how do you reinvest that. Here's the rule. Do not ever pay for something on credit. There's gonna be a lot of people coming after you as soon as you establish yourself as a business, or you might think that you're a business and you think it's okay to do it because you've got a little bit of money coming in every once in a while. But this is a bad idea, y'all. Do not ever go into debt for your business or your business is going to drown you and you're gonna hate it and you're gonna resent it. Do not ever do this, y'all. If you're gonna buy a new computer, save up for it. Pause on that. Save up for that new computer. Save up for that ultra awesome, better, bigger, cooler, uh, amazing drawing tablet that you want. But don't go ahead and place it on a business credit card. It's just a bad idea, y'all. Plus, what happens if your business dips? What happens if you need to pivot yourself and you start to go into something else and it's not that successful for a little bit, but now you still have to pay bills? That's not a good idea, is it, y'all? The other thing that I wanna really focus you into, though, reinvesting in, you need to make sure that you are not taking an exorbitant amount of money that you are collecting in and spending it on yourself. Okay, do not think that that is just free extra money, okay? Think about how you can invest that back into your business to grow that business, okay? Like for me, I think about what tools and equipment do I need? What stuff do I need for YouTube? Like this is stuff that I've reinvested back into this so that I can grow as I've been growing, okay? The other thing is, and this is totally free y'all, but you need to invest into your relationships. This is the number one thing that you should really be investing into. So think about your clients. How do you give them a better experience? And how do you branch out and you reach new clients? And how do you go ahead and you build some relationships with some other businesses, with some other artists, okay? Take a lot of time to invest into that. And then most importantly though, invest into yourself. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Make sure that you're personally developing yourself. Make sure that you're learning about business. Make sure you're learning about how to grow as a human being because there will be no better dividend that you will ever get in your entire life than you investing into yourself. So please don't forget about that either. It's not all about the money, y'all, but the money will follow your personal development. Your value will never exceed the value of what you provide others. Another big blockade I see people fall into all the time is that they'll think that they need to have some like super legally sound ultra robust contract that they have at the go every single time. Like some people won't even start their business, won't even start to even do a freaking commission for $52 until they have a contract. And I get this question a lot. Then I'll go, Sean, do I need a contract in place? Honestly, no, you do not. Like the only reason that you should 1000% always have a contract in place would be if you are working with an established business. Like if you're gonna do a book cover for a corporate entity, yes, you should. If you're gonna do concept art for them, yes, you should. If you're freelancing for Riot Games, yes, you should have a contract in place because you are not only giving them the artwork, but you are also giving them the asset and the ownership rights, okay? Otherwise, if you're just working with private clients, y'all, no, you do not have to have a contract in place. Now, all that being said though, I would still have one ready, but I don't start off and I did not start off having a contract, but that is something that I went ahead and I made as I went through it. Cause sometimes a client will ask for it, but I'm gonna be real with you. Um, over the course of doing this for the years that I have, I've only been asked for it twice, okay? Otherwise, when I've worked with businesses, yes, corporations, you should always have a contract in place. If you have, by the way, no idea how to make a structured contract, I have a link down here in the description for how you can make a contract. And also if you need a terms of service agreement, right down there for you too. But these are not and should not serve as a blockade for you to start because if that's the case, y'all, you're just looking for some reason to stall. So please take your foot off the brake and hit the gas. So if you want a more robust system, something that's gonna allow you to get a similar close rate to me where I have a 75% close rate for everybody that comes to talk to me about any type of business opportunity, I got the perfect thing for you. And it's also something that that nobody else does or talks about. And it is my personal conversation technique and my personal script for how I talk to clients. I'm gonna give it to you right here in this video. So go check it out. It's gonna change your business forever.